Hello everyone I hope you all are doing very well welcome to this edition of our sunday series and in today's video we are going to discuss some of these species that have been in news lately so let's begin with our today's edition with the very first species as the marwari horses recently the marwari horses were in news as six of them have been exported from jodhpur in rajasthan to bangladesh where they will be used for carrying the cart of bangladesh's president so let us discuss a bit and some of the key facts about the marwari horses first of all the marwari horse breed originated and as the name suggest it originated in the marwa region of rajasthan where hot arid desert conditions present a unique ecosystem now when we say the marwa region it is a region in the western rajasthan and it lies partly in the thar desert now the name marwa itself comes from the word maru which means desert in sanskrit Coming to the horses the Marwari horses are one of the finest breeds of horses and are considered the most elegant and enduring breed amongst all so they are primarily maintained for show for horse safaris and sports ceremonial and religious purposes and during the earlier days in war now further on it is genetically similar to the Kathiawadi breed of the Kathiawad region in Gujarat so when we say the Kathiawadi breed of horses as the name suggests it comes from kathiawad now talking about kathiawad it is the peninsular region of the state of gujarat so this region is known as kathiawad it is a peninsular region and it is also termed as saurashtra over this here you'll see the gulf of kutch this is the gulf of kutch and here we have the gulf of khambat or as we call it the gulf of kambe some of the major cities of the kathiawad region includes rajkot cities like jamnagar and bhavnagar etc Coming back to the Marwari horses its popularity has spread to other states particularly in Punjab and Gujarat as well so as you see here we have the breed called the Marwari horses so this was a little bit about the species now let us move on to our next species and that is the amur falcons so recently the amur falcon stopped over 21 countries during its annual journey covering 22000 kilometers in a year eastern asia all the way to southern africa and back as stated in a report by the wildlife institute of india so as you can see this is our amur falcon now let us discuss some of the facts about the species first of all amur falcons are small raptors so when we say raptors specifically we are talking about the predatory birds or the birds of prey so these are the predatory birds of the falcon family with the scientific name falco amurensis now when we talk about the falcons falcons are the species of hawks of the family falconidae these are diurnal birds of prey and specifically characterized by long pointed wings and swift powerful flight now coming back to amur falcons they are the world's longest traveling raptors and they start their traveling routine with the onset of winters and it is actually the longest amongst all the avian species one more key fact they are named after the amur river that forms the border between russia and china Now these birds breed in the southeastern Siberia and northern China and they migrate across India and then over the Indian Ocean to southern Africa in this region before returning back to Siberia and Mongolia. In between you see a small portion that is in uh, Nagaland. It is the Doyang Lake. Doyang Lake in Nagaland that is famous as stopover for the Amur falcons during the annual migration from the breeding grounds to warmer South Africa. And because of this reason Nagaland is also known as the falcon capital of the world. So here we are particularly talking about the the Doyang Lake in Nagaland. Now let us discuss the conservation status. If we talk about the IUCN state, it is under the least concern category. And then the Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972, it comes under the protected category in the Indian Wildlife Protection Act. Also in the list of convention on migratory species, it comes under protected category. So this was a little bit about the amur falcon now let us move on to our next species and that is the indian black honey bee so recently a new species of endemic honey bee has been discovered in the western ghats let us discuss about the indian black honey bee so the new species has been named Ap apis carinjordian and given the common name indian black honey bee moreover this species has been spotted from the western ghats and that is after a gap of more than 200 years the last honey bee described from india that was apis indica in 1798 by fabricius now although fabricius named indian bee apis indica it was not considered a, a valid species till now now the research team restored the status of apis indica and that is based on a new measure for species discrimination in honey bees and this measure is termed as 
Radio Medial Index the RMI Moreover the Apis carin jordan has evolved from Apis sirena morphotypes that got acclimatized to the hot and humid environment of the western ghats Further on talking about the the distribution of this species ranges from central western ghats and the nilgiris to the southern western ghats covering the states of Goa Karnataka Kerala and parts of Tamil Nadu So till date only a single species that is Apis sirena was noted across the plains of central and southern india and also sri lanka as a fairly uniform population in the indian subcontinent if we talk about the protection status the species has been classified as near threatened in the state based on the iucn red list categories so this was a little bit about the indian black honey bee now let us move on to our next species that is pseudohelis anomalai here we are talking about a species of eschurine crab recently this was in news so researchers have discovered a new species of eschurine crab at mangroves of parangipetti and that is near the vella river eschuri in kudalo district kudalo district is in tamil nadu and when we talk about vella river it rises in the eastern ghats in the salem district of tamil nadu So as you can look in the picture this is the Pseudohelis anomalai further on the species has been named Pseudohelis anomalai in recognition of the Anomalai University's 100 years of service in education and research so this is the first ever record of this genus Pseudohelis that is collected from high intertidal areas in front of the center of advanced studies now so far only two species first is the Pseudohelis subquadrata and the second one is Pseudohelis literally have been confirmed within this genus. Now talking about description, first of all, this species is distinguished by dark purple to dark grey coloring, with irregular light brown, yellowish brown, or white patches on the posterior carapace. So as you can see, light brown, purple, and white color on the posterior. Now moreover, the new species is small and has maximum width of up to twenty mm. This species is not aggressive. Important fact. and can move fast like other intertidal crabs so as many as 17 species of the intertidal crabs have been recorded in this particular region moving further talking about the habitat the species inhabits muddy banks of mangroves and their burrows were located new metaphors of particular type of mangroves that is the avicenna mangroves further on if we talk about the distribution of the species it has been discovered around indian subcontinent and the eastern indian ocean so the occurrence of pseudohelis in india links the distribution gap between the western indian ocean and the western pacific ocean So this was a little bit about the species now let us move on to our next species and that is the harlequin frogs recently researchers confirmed that many harlequin frogs once believed to be extinct are still persisting so as you can see in the picture these are our harlequin frogs these were considered to be extinct but they are still persisting now these frogs are typically small to medium bodied any of them have bright and contrasting warning colors These colors generally represent the potent skin toxins. The species is typically diurnal and many of them occur in the vicinity of the streams all year long while others are found inside the forests. Now these frogs occur in diverse habitats specifically from tropical wet forests along the Pacific coast and the Amazon basin to the mon- montane regions and the paramounts of the Andes mountain ranges an important fact is that the presence of these frogs is an indicator of the water quality and healthy ecosystems and their demise might be an early warning to the humans of the critical environmental conditions so this was a little bit about the harlequin frogs now let us move on to our next species that is the indian skimmer or the indian scissors bill So recently a majority of the Indian skimmer sightings were seen in and around the Koringa Wildlife Sanctuary this particular is in Andhra Pradesh so this is our Indian skimmer now talking about some of the key facts about the species the Indian skimmer or also known as the Indian scissor spill is one of the three species that belong to the skimmer genus Rhynchops in the family Laridae now the Indian skimmer gets its name from skimming behavior over the water surface it is found on the large rivers and lakes also in the swamps and coastal wetlands such as in the estuaries if we talk about the distribution it is found in southern asia and also in the pakistan in the indus river system of kashmir and northern and central india along the ganges bangladesh and burma and formerly it occurred laos cambodia and vietnam now the breeding colonies of this particular species 
are known from the in the Chambal River area, which is an area that is of importance for specifically for Ghadiyal. Talking about the IUCN status, it comes under endangered category, and specifically threats include habitat degradation and declining prey population. So this was a little bit about Indian skimmer. Now let us move on to our next species, and that is the mink. So this is in context of mink fur now denmark was the world's biggest producer of mink fur at one point producing almost 40 percent of the world's supply of this particular fur and it was mostly exported to asia so as you can see over here this is the species known as mink all right now mink are dark colored carnivorous mammals from the mustelidae family which also includes weasels, otters and ferrets. If we talk about their commercial uses, they are bred for their fur, mainly in China and Denmark, also in the Netherlands and Poland. Another thing is mink oil. So mink oil is particularly used in some medicinal products and cosmetics as well as to treat, preserve and waterproof leather. Two of these species are referred to as mink. They are American mink and the European mink. Talking about the IUCN status, they are categorized under critically endangered category. So this was a little bit about the species and with this we call it a wrap of today's edition of Species in News. I hope you liked the video. You can also check out the daily current affairs section on our website for more details and related articles. And for more such videos, do stay tuned to the next IAS YouTube channel.